Okay, this is the extra comments in relation to distribution function, and there is a there was a part there in the very end where we use the integration by parts. I decided to give extra comments on the way we use integration by parts identity to in, you know, in connection with distribution function. So first, I'll give you the integration by parts identity itself. So if I have a measure space on the real line, not necessarily the, not necessarily the canonical length measure space, but still some measure space on the real line, then the integration by parts normally, normally refers to the identity like this. Uh, it is a very powerful identity because on the left hand side you have the, the back integral of some function over the segment AB with respect to your given measure. On the right hand side, this is effectively a Riemann integral, uh, where and that is true for every C1 function on the segment AB, and where capital M is the function defined like this. It's a function which is similar to the distribution function, it is a non-increasing function, it is the right continuous function too. Now we in my comments to in my comments about the distribution function. We prove the following identity, if I have a function which is integrable and if I associate the tilde distribution function with this function f like this, then we prove that the integral of f or integral of the absolute value of f can alternatively be computed like this, <coughs> where the g n tilde f is the measure defined in the real line via this identity, I mean it's a measure which is defined on semi-ring of half open intervals via this identity and then you make the standard Lebesgue extension of this measure to a sigma algebra of Lebesgue measurable subsets. In my comments in connection with the distribution function I said if you apply the integration by parts identity to the right hand side here and when you do that you have to observe that you you choose as a measure mu your measure gn tilde f m capital in this case will be just a distribution function n tilde f g function will be just function x so if you apply integration by parts identity to the to the right hand side here, I claim that the result will be like so. This integral obviously just the second term here in the right hand side, so I claim in fact that the first term will vanish, and I want to comment on this a little bit more. If I want to claim that this first term will vanish, I have to show to you that actually that the limit like this is zero, and because that's the limit which will correspond when uh, to the uh, correspond to the, this expression taken at the point plus infinity, this limit of integration. Now, when you when your measure space here is finite, uh, the your lower point here, point zero. Yeah, uh, uh, when you plug your zero, this expression will vanish immediately because you have a factor which equals zero. However, when your measure space is not finite, you still has to address the problem. With this limit when you look at the sigma fine of measure space. Now the, the purpose of this comments in fact, uh, the purpose of this video in fact is to comment on these two limits with more details. So the title of this comment is in fact a little bit misleading because we are not going to look into the proof of the integration by parts identity. Now this identity of this limit it will follow from the general observation like this. Uh, uh, well, which I will call lemma. If I have integrable function on some measure space, sigma finite measure space, and if I have a decreasing sequence of subsets, measurable subsets, such that we have a name for the intersection, intersection also in my sigma algebra, of course. If I have such a construction, then the integral over the intersection is a limit of the integrals over individual subsets. This is, if you remember. Uh, properties of the sigma additive measures, you probably realize that this resembles a lot one of the properties of the sigma additive measures, and in fact proof of this statement also follows from that from those properties. If you if I make the extra observation that if I introduce a measure like this colon to make to, to emphasize that actually we're making here a definition. If I introduce a measure like this, then this will be a sigma additive measure on the sigma algebra f. 
And so all we have to do, we have to use the properties of the sigma additive measures and apply them for this particular choice of a measure, and that will establish this identity. Just having this will be enough to establish this limit because all I have to do, I have to observe that I have to observe that we have the following inequality. If I have a sequence xn, if I have a sequence xn which goes to the infinity, sequence of numbers, then we do have this uh, this identity. That's the identity we have for every n. In fact, now if you apply the comparison principle to these two functions, you will have this inequality, because the integral of this function, the integral of this function, this is just this distribution function, the integral of this is just written here, and if you think about this half infinite intervals as decreasing subsets on the real line, the intersection of this half open, half infinite inter intervals will be empty set. That's why the limit of these integrals will be equal to the limit to the, will be equal to the integral over empty set, which is zero. That's why this limit is zero, and that's why the limit of these elements, these numbers, is zero. And that's how we establish this identity. Now, to see this identity, I have to recall one of the results I proved in my earlier comments, in the comments which I called dyadic subgraphs, the big integrals and dyadic subgraphs. In those comments we establish that if I have a function which is integrable, if I have this function which is integrable with respect to this measure, then the series like that will converge. In fact, in those comments, this symbol here, we had something like this. We had a measure of this subgraph, or in fact supergraph, so the, those points where the function bigger than a given level, but uh, this is just the distribution function of the f at the point 2 to the negative n. Now, one of the conditions that the series converge is that the term, the sum of your series, goes to zero. Now, just making this extra observation that for every x you can always find two powers of 2 which squeeze your x from both sides. You can now write the inequality like that. And that finishes the this limit because this is a common term of your the sum of your series this goes to zero and that's why this will also go to zero due to the sandwich principle